y'all welcome back to Courtney's Diary. So today I want to talk about the cost of freelancing or a couple things that I think that you guys should know before you start freelancing. So in my last video I talked about having a new vision and basically reinventing yourself this year doing some things that are different and out of your comfort zone. So with this video if you're ready to jump off of the cliff of freelancing watch it and take some notes because I want to share everything that I learned when I first started freelancing, when I started my side business, so that hopefully y'all won't have to go through the mistakes that I went through. Okay, so let's jump right into it. No, tip number one is know how you want to set up your business. What type of product or service are you gonna offer? So generally before you start freelancing, you probably have some sort of specialized knowledge that you can probably help people with so for example i started freelance content writing because i was good at writing and marketing and i know how to put information on the internet in a way for people to be attracted to it so i had the idea to do that and i know technically that's a remote service so know how you want to set up your business in relation to are you going to be selling a product is it going to come from like your house? Are you gonna have the physical product and ship it to people? Or are you going to be drop shipping? Drop shipping is basically when you have your online storefront and you communicate with the manufacturer and your customers place an order and it gets shipped directly from the manufacturer. So I'm not really too familiar with drop shipping as far as like me personally doing it, but if that's how you wanna set up your business, you know, that's one model or another model is offering a remote service. So if you want to start managing social media or if you want to start graphic designing, that is a good place to start online, which is setting up a website and like getting your first couple of clients. And that's a remote service that you can offer to anyone in the world, y'all. It's crazy how you don't need to wake up and go to an office or go to people anymore and make money, you can literally do it from your house, your bedroom, anywhere, the bathroom, a hotel. So the, the first tip I would say is to know how you want to set up a business. If you're going to be offering physical products, that's going to take a lot more, you know, time and research and investment rather than setting up an online remote service for a digital product. So a digital product is when you offer something that is digital only. So for example, if I wanted to write an ebook on how I started a business and these are the steps I took and these are the resources and I put it on my website, that's a digital product. People generally buy it and they get like a download file and they can keep it forever. It's nothing physical that you have to send out to people or incur any types of shipping or insurance or anything like that. So honestly, in my opinion, the easiest way to start freelancing is to start by offering a remote service. Or if you are, you know, if you have specialized knowledge in drop shipping or setting up an online retail store, or you have a product that you really want to make and sell, I think those are good viable freelance options too. But the quickest way to get some experience is to start offering a remote service, whether that's like tax consulting, business consulting, marketing consulting, um, people, you can do anything on the internet nowadays. So you don't really need to have any, if you don't really need to have a storefront or you don't really need to have an office. So that's tip number one is to know, generally from the beginning, how you will set up and structure your business. Now. Tip number two is to price yourself accurately out the gate. <laughs> and this is a very, very, very sticky topic because pricing yourself goes way deeper than naming a price strategically. Um, and also like people just feel weird sometimes when they start to charge for their services. And that has a lot more to do with mindset and like, you know, some internal work that you may have to work through. But I suggest, and I struggle with this, and honestly, I probably still do struggle with it because it can just be so awkward when someone is like, what's your price? And as much as you say, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that, oh, my price is this, you're going to feel a little weird in the beginning telling people your price 
and just feeling worthy enough to just, you know, have them pay you that price. So there's going to be some anxiety around that. But some tips to help with knowing and setting your prices out the gate so that you can make a profit if that's your goal is to take into account the difference between revenue and profit and take into account what you're going to be doing with your freelance business income. Because if you're going to be bootstrapping and technically that's like a term for, to me bootstrapping is when you're going to be using the money that you make and putting it directly back into your business. So that's going to change how you want to price yourself. So I hope I'm not talking in circles, but if you're going to be bootstrapping your company and basically, you know, running it as a, a freelancer, a one person business, it's best that you set your prices, you know, kind of high out the gate if you want to, to leave some money for yourself, if you wanted to make a profit and pay yourself. And I also think that when you set your price, you should take into account um, how you're going to be collecting your payments. And I'm looking at my notes. So. so by that, I mean, what type of payment system are you going to be using? Are you going to be using Stripe, PayPal? Or are you going to just be using like something like QuickBooks? Basically, I think honestly, the best way to do it is just like the way that the IRS tells you to do it is use an invoice or bookkeeping system that allows you to create invoices and keeps track of the incoming payments that you use under your business employee, you know, identification number. That's the honest way to do it. I don't suggest you use any other thing except for like if you have Stripe, if you have Cash App and it is connected to your business bank account, yeah, cool. But I say that when you start to set your prices and you use a payment platform, you're going to need to take into account the the percentage or dollar amount that that platform takes out of your, you know, your payment and then pays you. So if I invoice someone for $1,000 and Stripe takes out 3% of that $1,000, my price needs to be 3% higher every time consistently to be able to make the money that, you know, I said that I wanted to make. So keep into account revenue over profit. Will you be paying yourself or will you be using that money and putting it directly back into your business as well as keep into account what type of bookkeeping system you're going to use when you're setting your prices. Now price, those are just the main two things that I talk about when it comes to price. So let's get into number three. Number three is keep your expenses as low as possible when you start out because that's also going to determine how high and higher and higher your prices should be getting based on your amount of expenses and based on if you're going to be trying to make a profit for yourself. So let me first have a disclaimer by saying I am not a financial advisor. I'm not anything related to finances or a business consultant. I'm just simply telling y'all the tips that I learned and that I still work through when I started my freelance business. So number three is keep your expenses as low as possible. Examples of expenses for your remote freelancing business are things like maintaining a website, creating a website, um, maintaining like a business Gmail account, maintaining contractors. If you're going to pay people to do work for you, or if you're going to hire like a marketing manager, social media manager, any contractors that you hire or anything that you use as far as anything related to your business, that's an expense. If you use a portion of your home, it can't be your whole home, that can be a business expense. So I would say to keep your expenses as low as possible. The main mistake I made when I first started my freelance writing business was that I was paying people to do things that I could really do myself. Now, I do understand that when you start to have more responsibility in your business, it does save you money to actually pay people. But I was honestly just being a little lazy. <laughs> and it, I like, I, I did work through it though. I did like the feeling of paying people, but I should have been focused on keeping that profit for myself instead of paying people to do work that I really could have done myself. So contractors, if you are just a one person running your freelance business, you're going to have contractors. 
and that just means that you pay people to do work on a project basis. You probably won't have employees until you start, you know, incorporating or like becoming more self-employed and owning like you own a job. So if you're a freelancer, you don't really own a job. You you own yourself and you are the business, if that makes sense instead of when you are like self-employed and you own, you have employees, you own the the entity that does the work. And I don't want to say you own the employees, but that's just different legally. For the purpose of expenses, con contracting people to do work for you, in my opinion, is it's less stressful. Like you don't have to pay people employment taxes or you just pay them by the project. And if you want to hire them again, do that. But keep your expenses as low as possible because that's going to go back into your pricing. So if you know you're going to need contractors, let's say you start a cleaning business. If you're going to need people to work in that business, you can probably start by doing a budget and then your pricing is going to creep up based on, you know, the amount of contractors or the amount of office space or something that you may need to lose least throughout the year. So that's number two or actually that's number three. Keep your expenses as low as possible. And number four is to save money for your taxes. So honestly, two, three, and four are all related as far as how your how high your price is probably going to need to be because you're going to need to, when you set your price, you're going to need to take into account what you're going to be doing with the money that you make from your freelance business and how many like people you may want to help you or any other business expenses. But of course, take into account at least 20 to 30 percent that are going to need to be set aside for taxes because we all know that the IRS is absolutely going to want to know where this money came from. So it's so much easier to know where your money came from when you have an actual accounting system in place. You don't even when I say accounting system, I mean you have your business money going into an account and it's coming and going in and out of the same account instead of like being everywhere because that's going to make it harder when it's time to file your taxes. But the main thing I want to say in number four is to be able to set a, at least 20% of your business income, whether it's invoice by invoice or monthly, 20% away in another area so that you can not be surprised when it's time to do your taxes. So personally, I still have a full-time job. So when you have a full-time job and you also have, you know, like a freelance business, it's easier. I use TurboTax. I feel like it's easier to do it together because you do your W-4 income and then you do like your 1099 income and your like Schedule C income. But basically what I'm trying to say is when you are starting a freelance business and it's only you, you're probably going to be getting paid as if you are a contractor. And when companies pay you as a contractor, they don't take out any of the taxes that your normal employer would take out. So it's up to you to take out 20 to 30 percent, whether it's by case by case basis or monthly and put it away so that you're not surprised when the IRS is asking you like what what kind of taxes have you paid on this basically free money that you've been making throughout the year. So number four is to save at least 20 to 30% of your freelance income so that you are not looking crazy, honestly, like I was before. So another tip within that is to please, please, please open a business bank account. I don't care if you're only making $100 a month from your business or as an independent freelancer, open your business bank account. And I learned this from trial and error. So I started from jump with the business bank account, but I had, what I started to do was use my business card for non-business related expenses. And I think that that just gets really messy. Right now it's January and I'm trying to get all my stuff together to, you know, be on point and file my taxes. I think that just gets really messy. So Save money for taxes, but also I would use your business bank account only for business expenses. Do not commingle your accounts. Do not commingle your accounts. 
do not commingle your accounts. Do not have business money, money that you earn from your business as a freelancer going into your personal checking account or at least in a way to where it's undocumented. That is just begging for you to be audited by the IRS, honestly. So that's tip number four <laughs> is to save money from your freelance income for your taxes and to also open a separate bank account and only use that card to to basically pay for your business expenses. And if you want to pay yourself, I suggest setting up in a, a software like Stripe or um, or QuickBooks and you can actually go in and give yourself a paycheck every month or every two weeks. Or you can always just transfer it from your business account to your personal account. Personally, I think that it's undocumented that way. So that leaves it a little bit messy too, based on where all the money is coming from and going if it's intermingled. But those are my four tips. So to recap, my four tips that you should know before you start out freelancing is to know how you want to set up your business, price yourself as accurately as possible as you can out the gate when you first start your business, keep your expenses low, and set up and maintain a system so that you can save for your taxes and do this all out of your business account. Don't commingle your... So I have dedicated myself to Courtney's diary and I hope that if y'all watch this, you love it, you share it with people because I would love to get to 100 subscribers. My videos drop on Fridays. So subscribe and look forward to the content that I create here on this channel. I'm actually using Courtney's Diary as my project, my passion project, because I do love to learn and share information that I learn. But I also just am using this to document my life and my lessons from my actual journal. So that's why it's called Courtney's Diary. So like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram because I will be documenting my behind the scenes there. So See y'all next video.